real solutions to money, relationships, wellness, and more. Shine a light onto your day and into your life. Power Your Life with Dr. Joanne White. Good evening and welcome to Power Your Life. I'm your host, Joanne White. Tonight we're going to tackle the widespread and complex theme of bullying. Often bullying happens outside of us by others, but what happens when the bully comes from the inside? Most of us have beaten ourselves up at one time or another, and sometimes we fail or make wrong decisions or we undermine our primary relationships. That's natural but it can get out of control. What's important is how we can learn to forgive ourselves, become more confident, and build more self-worth. Dr. Sidney Cohn, the author of Your Self-Sabotaging Inner Bully, Standing Up to It Once and For All, has some answers. Thanks for joining me, Dr. Cohn. It's good to be here. I welcome this opportunity. Oh, it's my pleasure, and thanks for the book. Very welcome. So. We all do self-sabotage, but what's the difference between an inner bully and an external bully, an, out an outer bully? Outer bully basically reflects or is real bullies, people who can be abusive, people who can belittle, people who can be physically at some time or another attacking. It's also sometimes more subtle forms of bullying, which can be guilt tripping, people who also at times are really neglected and ignored. There's really a, a whole range of what can go under the heading of bullying. Teasing, right? Te oh, absolutely. And now with the internet and all that cyberbullying, Cyber. right? Uh, yes. And what that does and what it can do is create internally what I call an inner bully, where the inner bully basically is a reflection and almost a mirroring of those kinds of communications that come from real bullies and they get internalized, and by getting internalized, a person is basically one way or another saying bullying things to themselves, and that can lead to some real self-sabotage. And it could also lead to, well, we undermine ourselves, and, we, and it's, I know oftentimes people have a battle within themselves. Now, you've been a psychologist for 30 years, and you also do some consulting at Kennedy, at Kennedy Memorial. Is that true? So, Correct. So congratulations, 30 Thank years you. in private practice. That, that is impressive. So you've met a lot of people who probably come to you as they come to me, and they talk about their thoughts that are out of control and the, what they say to themselves. What, what kind of advice do you give people who are sabotaging, let's say, their relationships, their primary relationships, their important relationships? It's very important to be as aware and mindful as you can of how there are things you can say or do or patterns of behaviors that if you don't get a handle on can create an ongoing pattern in which you are undermining those relationships. For example, in personal romantic relationships, it could be something along the lines of, well, certainly a case would be of, of infidelity, there's instances in which the communication is really not the way it's supposed to be. There are people who can go ahead and just basically do things that cause a loss of respect. And once that respect is lost, there increases the odds that you're not going to be as capable or as comfortable as you could be being in that relationship and having a healthy relationship. So basically what they're doing is they're, they're making sure on some level, maybe they're not even aware of it, right? But they're making sure on some level that their relationship isn't going to work because of their actions and their responses or lack of responses. Yes, and if I can yeah, piggyback please. off that, I look at it as there, there are three basic messages that our inner bully kind of instills in us, and it is all subconscious. Three basic messages. Number one, I don't deserve to get what mm -hmm. I want to be happy. Number two, I feel that when I do something or I mess something up in my life, I deserve some kind of punishment. And then the third message is basically, and I'm not allowed to challenge either of those two messages. So you put those three things together, and therefore your belief in yourself really isn't great. There's almost a sense of worthlessness inside, then as long as those messages are in place and you, in a sense, uphold them, 
you are more likely to do things <clears throat> or not do things that will sabotage the relationship sooner or later. So a lot of it as you're talking is about deservability. We, many of us don't feel that we deserve to have that relationship, to make a certain amount of money, to be good at work, to feel confident. And so, and then we don't believe that we have the ability, as you're saying, to, to, to change it. I'm just trying to, to understand it a little bit better. Yeah, there's, there's a distinction that comes up pretty often. I'll ask somebody, do you want to have a good relation? Do you want to be happy in your life? And in a sense, that kind of question is sort of a no-brainer. Yeah, of course I want to right. get what I want to be happy. Subtly, though, if you ask the same person the same kind of question, but you replace the word want with deserve, do I deserve to have the great kind of relationship I want? Do I deserve to be happy? Something else gets triggered inside. There's a discomfort. And that discomfort for a lot of people is because the inner bully is taking over inside and saying, no, 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 you don't deserve that. There are things you've done or haven't done right, and I, your inner bully, say, nope, you don't deserve it. I don't care how much you want it. And you know, the inner bully can get so loud and so sounding like it's really the boss, because I know I've had to work with my inner bully when I was really younger, and it was like, oh my God, it's the voice of God, and, and it's, but it's inside of us, it gets pretty scary and we give up that control. So what are some ways that people can actually defeat the inner bully or gain enough self-confidence and self-esteem to be able to stand up to it as your book says? There are different things I think that a person needs to take some control over and really practice in their lives. One of which for sure is how to give yourself credit for what you're doing right. The bully likes us to focus on kind of the glass half empty. What are right. we doing wrong? What are we doing insufficiently? In the process, the inner bully's in there saying, I don't want you to see what you do right. So there's a certain structured exercise that I have people do in which there's certain categories, uh, effort, courage, willpower, um, being giving to, to others, and that by giving yourself credit for those categories, anything you've done that day or in the last few days, that is a positive affirmation of a statement it goes against the inner bully. It's standing up to it because, again, it's in there saying, no, 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 you're not giving yourself any credit. So I think that's great. So people can practice those exercises, affirmations, if you will, mm -hmm. and eventually, eventually, the inner bully gets quiet. Does it ever turn off? Uh, no, <laughs> unfortunately. It's not going away. We all basically do have to live with it. And there are some people who certainly have, I call it a more taunting or tormenting inner bully, people whose degree of self-sabotage and negative self-talk is really a bigger problem. Well, Dr. Cohen, I think it's, it's such an important issue, and thank you. I think we did a great job. Thank you. Coming up, it's a global effort to help people around the world realize their dreams and overcome challenges. Meet two local forces behind the movement. Tonight we're talking about bullying and the solutions to defeat it. My next guests are producers behind a global project called Action Moves People, which is a collection of poems and songs that are meant to inspire people of all ages, cultures, religions, and lifestyles. Kevin Mackey and Whitney Payton will tell us more about this amazing nonprofit effort great to have both of you with us. It's great Thanks to be here. Thanks for having us. Oh, it's my pleasure. So this is not only an album, it's, it's a, really like a movement, it's a movement. right? Yes. right. So what inspired you to do this? Firstly, you were to tell us about you because you've been bullied when you were a kid, right? Yes, uh, in elementary school mostly. Uh, I was pushed around. Uh, sometimes these, this kid would tell me when, he, when I would leave school, he'd come out and beat me up and before I got on the bus. and. In intermediate school, there was a couple uh, times I was uh, bullied also, but it was very terrifying for me because I would always be scared to leave. Uh, and it wasn't until later in life where I figured out how to handle it. So was that what happened earlier, did that actually influence what you're doing now, Kevin? Yes, because I always want to help people. And uh, I just felt uh, as a child um, when I would be bullied, uh, 
so I, I, feel, I, I didn't feel I had any uh, defense against it. I just felt alone. And it's not something that you go home and talk to your parents about or you, know, you just keep it inside of you. And um, that always affected me. But as I grew out of it, as I went into high school, um, I just wanted to live my life and just helping people. And that's why when people ask me why I do these charity projects, I always refer to uh, the movie It's a Wonderful Life because my hero is George Bailey. And that's what I want to do. Well, I think both of you are doing it beautifully. And you Thank both you. have Grammys and, and you're doing some wonderful things here. So tell us a little bit about Action Moves People and what was the stim behind it? Did you kind of do that together, think it through together, or how did it come about? Well, myself, Whitney, and uh, a few other producers, Crystal Walhagen, uh, Rave Tessar, Kevin Frank, and am I leaving out anybody? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think yeah. you pretty much named everyone yeah. that's producers, but there's definitely a plethora of artists also involved in it. Um, those were just simply the producers. We get um, artists from all over the world uh, to be part of it so that there's someone representing kind of everyone, you know, so you can relate to at least one person on the compilation, and that's what it's about. So it's well, very diverse. And, and not only that, when you, you, it's actually when people can listen to it, it's stream, live stream, so they can yep. listen to it yes. for free. Yes. Right? And, yep. and that's important, too. And it also supports a charity group. So what uh, group does it support? Move This World. And what they do is to uh, teach kids uh, to live in an environment w with peace and anti-bullying. And you know, that's so very important, right? I mean, yeah, absolutely. So 100% of the profit goes to them. Uh, I mean, we volunteer completely for it. In fact, you know, a lot of our time and own, our own money uh, go into making it because studio costs um, and a lot of other things, gas just to go to the studio, right. you know, how right. it is uh, these <laughs> days. So, and so, and all the artists involved, it's the same way. It's the same way with all the producers, all the artists, everyone invested their time in it because it's something they believe in, um, especially for my generation now uh, coming up. I think bullying is intensified due to the internet. Cause cyber now, bullying. Yeah, cyber bullying is a thing. Um, people go to school, they get bullied, and then they come home, and that's supposed to be your safe place now, your home. Right. But it can continue. Uh, there's Facebook, there's Twitter, there's there's a lot of different ways that you know people can feel attacked or say what they want, and, and you know it's 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 really negative. Uh, for a majority, uh, right? A majority of things, and unfortunately, so. sometimes the bullying occurs at home, and and yeah, that, that as well. So that's that difficult. Too. So, how do you think this album and the movement is changing people? Because it's 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 multicultural, and you have a plethora, as you said, of artists mm -hmm. from all over the world, from many different backgrounds. What do, what do you think it's doing? Well. You never know for sure what it's doing because people don't always tell you. You just always hope when someone listens to the track, like there's one track on here called Her Sin. It's all about a uh, woman from this area, and uh, she's gay, and she loves a woman, but she also wants God's love. Mm -hmm. And she just is asking the world, what's wrong with that? So if, if another person who is gay hears that, maybe that'll give them some inspiration um, to be happy about themselves. Because um, we're not here to judge people. We're all humans. It's not our jo jobs to judge. We should all treat each other equally. Right. I think that's important. So what's interesting about the album is that the songs actually address all of these issues, these concerns. Mm -hmm. And like you said, Kevin, they give answers and yeah. ways to actually help people make that shift. And I thought that was pretty incredible because it's, it's like it's all there. Right. Yeah, it's meant to be ed educational, but entertaining at the same time. Right. Yeah, we have things that are funny, too. It's not all really serious. It's not, right. you know, it's all different religions are represented, all different lifestyles are represented, uh, races. So, and, and some are humorous, you know, it's not all <laughs> dead serious the whole time. you got to make light of situations, too. So it's kind of a, a really versatile CD. I think it's great. And I think what you guys are doing is really marvelous and, and helping to move people and to shift things globally. You have a new album. Is it out? Yeah, it's supposed to be out this I month. Do. Yeah, aside from uh, working with Kevin, as I often do for these uh, charity albums, and uh, like you said earlier, Kevin is a Grammy award-winning producer. I was fortunate. I'm one of the artists that was on the CD that uh, won the Grammy, but I have 
you know, my own solo thing, and that is uh, more so based towards like college kid kind of demographic. So I can be more edgy and and <laughs> you know more <laughs> aggressive in that. But uh, but yeah, my own solo thing. What's I'm the name the, of the album? On the Brink. That's okay, the name of my new album brink. coming out at the end of this month. It's a little different than this, but uh, again, uh, it's it's about versatility. So. Well, I think it's wonderful. Like I said, what you guys are doing, and I believe that a movement like this can change people. Thanks so much, both thank of you. you. And thank you. My pleasure. Kevin and Whitney, it was really such a pleasure to have you. And again, this, like I said, this is so very important work. Ahead on Power Your Life, we continue our discussion about bullying. Meet a local young man who has taken the fight against bullying to another level. It's a moving story that you won't want to miss. Welcome back. We've been talking about bullying tonight. It's an unfortunate reality that's rampant across the country's schools and communities. Often, children with disabilities become the innocent targets of bullying. 19-year-old Zach Elmer has a sibling with autism, and tonight Zach will share how he's helped his brother and others in the battle against bullying. Also, Zach will talk about autism education and support groups and how they can make a difference. Thank you for joining us, Zach. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. So you've been around the block with bullying and with autism, and let's talk about a little bit of the history, because you had told me on the phone that early on your brother was bullied, and then something changed that. What changed that? Uh, well, in his younger years throughout grade school, he was kind of, he has autism, so he was bullied, um, but as it he grew older and uh, came into school with me in high school. Me and uh, my friends kind of had his back and he had a peer group that uh, kind of helped him stop being bullied when he had others to help him out with, uh, with that. So that kind of stopped through when he came into high school. So you were very instrumental in making sure that people in the school knew that he was your brother and didn't mess with him. That's what you told me, right? Yeah. I. Uh, a lot of, well, I had a lot of friends throughout high school, so I told a lot of them about him, and they uh, all sort of, throughout knowing him and knowing me, started to understand him and helped other uh, peers throughout the school understand him. And when there's a large group that has that understanding for him, it uh, stopped the bullying and uh, helped him be more accepted in the uh, school environment. That's really important that somebody has a sibling or someone else that really looks out for them to prevent bullying or prevent any kind of discrimination. So you work a lot with support in terms of doing work with siblings, right, to give people more of an awareness of, of autism. Tell us about that. Uh, yeah, I work through an organization called uh, Faces for Autism, and there's uh, support groups for families with autism. and. Uh, there's also sibling groups that uh, siblings with autism or bleh, siblings of those with autism uh, will come for a meeting and talk about issues such as if their siblings being bullied, how to handle that, how to handle telling their peers they have a sibling with autism. There's some siblings who are embarrassed by that because they feel that they'll be bullied because they have a sibling with autism, and I kind of help them understand that if they explain to other people that they'll be understanding and that understanding will eliminate any of that, those issues that they're scared of. How do you feel about having a sibling with autism? Uh, I actually enjoy it. It's helped me in many ways, helped me be more understanding and helped me help other people like through Faces with Autism with uh, siblings and kind of helped me all around. I think that helping is something that you, you, you've talked about that that's something that you want to do. You're in college right now. What are you studying? I'm uh, studying music education at uh, University of Delaware. Have you seen a lot of bullying go on there? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's less in college, but there's still a fair amount with uh, a lot of people, you know, picking on, like a lot of males picking on females for uh, what they had done at a party or what they'd done here. And uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of that going on that sometimes you, know, you have to interject because it's kind of a, a part of the culture there in college with 
and kids don't really understand it. So helping others understand that is something I try to do. What do you think needs to be done for you, from your perspective to, to really put an end to bullying and help people feel supported in the community, people with differences? I think the main thing about ending bullying with people with differences is trying to help people understand and educate them about that because one of the main reasons for bullying is misunderstanding, people not realizing what, is, what the difference is between them and when they don't understand it, they become scared of it, and it leads to bullying. So a big uh, thing to end that is just helping people understand and explaining to them and educating and just spreading the word about, about the differences. When you talk to siblings about their brothers or sisters with autism or on the, uh, on the spectrum uh, and about bullying, what do you tell them? I mean, I usually tell them that it's something that Nobody's going to judge once they understand it. It's the reason for judging, like I just previously said, is misunderstanding. So if you keep your calm and explain to them instead of worrying what people are going to think or worrying how they're going to treat you differently, you explain, explain to your friends and your peers. And once they have an understanding, they'll spread it. And you'll have a, a support group, a net to fall back on. That you won't have any issues as long as you let people know. Zach, I think it's so important what you're doing and I think that you'll be a great teacher. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Don't go anywhere, there's more Power Your Life ahead. Thank you for tuning in tonight. We have a great show next week. Critically acclaimed singer and songwriter Marcus Goldhobner performs right here for us. Plus, it's a fashion show. We'll see conservative looks with a flirty edge for the office. Hope you'll join me. Remember that you have the power to power your dreams and power your life.